I'm going to take you on a journey through a realm of possibilities. In a world of mystery and wonder that is hidden from all of us. It's said that this is the oldest color photograph in the world. A picture of France. Now, how old do you think it is? I think it could be much, much older. And there's a reason for that. If you look at the steeple, you'll notice there's not a steeple. Now, it's a church, right? It looks like a church, and every town had a church. But what about towns before there were churches? What did they have? Well, they had what churches were before they were churches. Do you think when Christianity spread across Europe, for example, that they decided to tear down an existing building because the purpose was now different because of what they learned about God becoming man, sacrificing himself on the cross for everybody's sins. No, I, I'll give them credit. I think they were smarter than us. They went to their most revered building where the judgment seat the throne for the town and honored God by making that throne the th of the throne room where a ruler would sit they would honor God instead by having a priest sit in the chair who uh, points to God they put a cross behind the priest and uh, put a cross on top of the highest point of the structure, the highest structure in the town. Well, that would make sense. They just put a cross up on the top of it, what we would call a steeple. I mean, seems easier, doesn't it, than tearing it down, although that's what we do nowadays inexplicably. One of the many ways we know of today to make photographs and print them or project them permanently onto a surface, maybe one of those ways was known back in the technological age in which these buildings were constructed originally. Maybe they had ways to make photographs that are unknown to us. Maybe we have to redefine the word photograph because what is a photograph? Well, we've already, in my lifetime, we've redefined what a photograph is because when I was born, a photograph was something that was, it was developed into a print via a color negative or then reproduced via that uh, negative by projecting and exposing a different kind of film that was more durable. Of course, 99.9% .9 of the photographs now are digital. Maybe they were as well back then. However, sometimes they would create a print and maybe some of those prints survived. Now, if those prints survived, what do you expect would happen with them? Well, I would expect two things to happen. But the two things that would happen would be, number one, the person in receipt of this ancient photograph would say, uh, this has to be, you know, the year whatever, 1840, circa 1850, because that's about as far back as they'll be willing to go by strict adherence 
to the narrative. You know, the thing, the premise that I so often reject. The, the prosaic, mundane narrative that claims to know the weight of the moon Io orbiting Jupiter. You know, that, that ridiculous authority. Okay? I absolutely reject that highly esteemed, memorized, propagated, indoctrinated narrative that has so many errors that it is sinister. So using my um, open-minded, common sense, yet also educated and informed, mostly logical, yet human analysis ability, looking at these photographs, I see wood that possibly got petrified into stone later. I see what looks like to me giant bones or petrified bones or partially petrified bones just as part of the landscape before it got refurbished into something less exciting. I see a photograph of the moon that um, maybe was before its time. I see a portrait of Sir Galahad and the Pale Nun. Maybe they're actors playing the role or maybe it's actually them. I see huge structures that already look old, at least the ones I'm aware of, and I've had architecture classes. I see windows that are bricked up or boarded up already on these things. Statues galore. A, a huge scale to it, as if it were made for taller, larger people. And if you look at the person on the bottom right and you consider that that's probably a hand railing he's sitting, leaning against, um, you guys wanted evidence that, you know, you it's like I'm talking crazy talk when I say these things are built for giants. Well, take a look. And then there's destruction, there's rubble. Here in France, and what I'm doing is, if these if there were photographs that were of the nature of which I speak and that people were aware of it, where would you find them? Well, they wouldn't be um, in a museum because it's not part of the narrative yet. There would be people in, in the know who would want to have their hands on these things and preserve them. So you find them for sale for like 10,000 British pounds a piece. And uh, you find pictures of what looks like to me people with the technology to take like Polaroid shots uh, approaching a city that was already wiped out, the inhabitants gone or possibly long gone and everything just kind of waiting for them as long as they have the wherewithal to dig it out. And I see that the population of the people walking into the city, they themselves have few belongings and they are also few in number because it's not so long since Noah's flood and uh, the human race is only still getting started. Now, why would they be walking into these cities? Why wouldn't they have already been there? Well, remember the Tower of Babel scattered them. Now, in this case, in this photograph, I do see a cross on the top of one of those, so that I would think would have to be at least as recent as the time of Christ. So if you're a subscriber to my 
backup channel or my B-sides channel, I call it, you'll you'll have seen this photo already, and you'll know that it's an um, area of Paris that is used in the game Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, or better known as MW3. Um, so check that out if you haven't seen it. And if you hear noises in the background, I have a chef preparing a meal. Uh, so that that's what you may hear. Um, so it looks like they're just digging out a city that was buried in mud. Just as plain and simple as that. Hey guys, we found a city. Let's dig this puppy out. Slap a cross up on top of this church looking thing and move in. And here they come and they they move in and they're taking photographs with their Polaroids that you know they brought from wherever Babylon or wherever the heck they came from. And then here's a basement. Um, you you can see the windows. Like, do you build? Do you when you're making a basement? Do you make windows with the dirt on the other side and then block up the windows just to make it like easier for water to leak in? Or do you not bother with that? Yeah, people just kind of, they made windows in their basements because they were, they were still closer to the primitive caveman in the way they think. So if you like my research, here's how I do it. One of the many ways I, if I'm researching something I'm quite sure I don't know about, uh, or even if I think I know about it, but I'm testing a conspiracy a theory of some kind, I'll formulate many different hypotheses of what would logically have to then be true or likely yield interesting results contrary to the popular narrative if one looks deeply into it. So in this case one of the things I did was Windows I ex I'm in my experience windows are made of wood or metal or plastic um, and I'm talking about the surround of the window and if wood is petrified into stone because of the deluge then I should be able to find stone window surround first thing you look when you type in search terms like that the first thing that you'll find is a counterfeit and it could be an intentional counterfeit uh, but I doubt it. I think it's more of just a copycat style because does it make sense to make window frames and um, sashes and all these different things out of stone? Does it make sense to have to fit the window glass against stone? Or does it make sense to have a layer of wood that you can just maintain or easily replace or, you know, so uh, you have to dig deeper as with all these things because there, there is a concerted effort to cover up something. Well, what, what did they cover up? Well, look at what I found. Well, this elaborately carved stone window, which was apparently carved from a solid piece to elucidate features that make no sense um, here's another example where it looks to be the same type of thing and to me it looks like a wooden dowel uh, like a you spun on a lathe piece of wood you know maybe a little bit of carving on it and it's fitted in but it's all solid stone you know how hard that would be to carve that like one mistake and the, the whole thing's lost I mean why put yourself through that? Um, so would you carve in features that look like it's wood fitted together or bricks or blocks? All right, so just a little note about any uh, potential copyrights or wrongs. Um, this is my original research on the internet, which I can access, and the photos were only used to the um, degree to which they were important to the points that 
I'm making and uh, no farther. And uh, with respect to the um, uh, owners of the photographs, these photographs, I would believe, are in public domain anyway, as they are very, old, very old and before the dates at which the copyright would have expired. So with that, I think it's enough for the day. Food for thought. Enjoy some more uh, music that I played for the outro. And I hope you like the intro too.